issued a statement clarifying on the dismissal of ex-corporal Omar Sajo from the Gambian National Army, who was alleged to be the son of Mr. Salif Sajo, the leader of the MFDC separatists in Kasama, Senegal. The army says due to the sensitive nature of the allegations, it conducted an investigation into the matter, but there was no evidence to prove that ex-corporal Omar Sajo is the son of Salif Sajo. However, ex-corporal Sajo was dismissed from the GAF in 2017 after investigations by GAF and the SIS established that he gained admission into the Gambia Armed Forces through irregular and fraudulent means, leading to his dismissal from the army. After willfully making a false entry in an official document and Section 78 of the Armed Forces Act for conduct prejudicial to good order and discipline, the statement added. Now, joining me on the line to discuss more on the matter is the Army spokesperson, Mr. Lamin K. Sanyam. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, Mr. Sanyang, what prompted the clarification now considering that ex-corporal Omar Sajo was dismissed from the army since 2017, according to the statement? Um, what prompted the, the, um, the clarification was that um, there was a lot of um, you know, agitation that, was, um, that followed the press conference that was held um, by the National Security Advisor um, last week, um, I think a couple of weeks ago. And then the, the armed forces deemed it fitting to um, clarify the matter, um, to lay to rest um, this um, allegation on um, um, ex-corporal Omar Sajo's dismissal from the armed forces. So does this suggest that there may be other officers in the army who are wrongfully employed as other people were claiming? Um, those, I don't think it suggests that um, there are so, um, other people in the armed forces who are... Um, you know who have the same issue um but what we we have to be mindful of is um you know in law there is what is called uh, what is um you know uh, the adage that um innocent until proven guilty so until such a case comes up um you know um, we may not be able to in a in a position to 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 state categorically that there are people out there with um you know false um you know certificates joining the, the ranks of the armed forces so what is your institution doing to avoid such reoccurrence? Well, anytime such um, issues come up, and this is not the first time that um, we have had, um, you know, issues like this, but anytime they come up, um, whether during um, recruitment um, or after the person, um, you know, is within our ranks, um, an investigation is conducted, like the case for um, Omar Sajo has been, you know, investigated. And if there is credible evidence to indicate that the person joined the armed forces um, using um, fraudulent means, um, the necessary course of action is taken um, um, in, in, in tandem with our um, regulations as an armed forces, the terms and conditions of service, and also the Gambia Armed Forces Act. So what is the fate of Mr. Sajo now? Um, as far as I know, um, I understand he is going through the course with the Gambia Immigration Department. So can you update us on the reforms that are currently undergoing in the country? Um, as far as the reforms goes um, for, for the Gambia Armed Forces, um, since 2017, um, within the Armed Forces itself, um, there has been um, a tremendous effort by the command itself um, to ensure um, we have um, a change of mindset of uh, members of the armed forces to understand that we are in a political dispensation where democracy um, and the rule of law is um, supreme. And to that end, we have embarked on several training and capacity building um, you know, exercises in that uh, we have had um, officers training periods um, in 2017, 2018. We have conducted also um, courses on civil military relations. This is one area that the, um, the Gambia Armed Forces emphasizes on. Um, because it's important that um, we maintain good quality relations um, with uh, members um, of the civilian population. And also, um, we have expanded on some of our operations in that um, we have um, some um, couple of battalions that's in Kanela and in Pase that have been open to ensure that um, members of the public and their properties are protected. And um, a lot of other issues um, like the State Guards Battalion also, um, 
the, the old presidential guards was um, disbanded because it was behind uh, most of these atrocities, um, namely for, for the junglers. So the, a new presidential guard is being created. Right now we have about 300 personnel who have been trained in presidential guards duties and they are you know, in charge of the protection of His Excellency the President. And um, a lot of other issues are also, a lot of civil military relations um, is, is also being conducted within the battalions in that they have battalion um, CIMIC teams that are working um, with the communities to, to enhance security um, in those areas. Not recently we have um, deployed a platoon in Kerpate to provide security and um, safety around that area. So a lot, um, I can say, is, is being done in that drive, especially for, you know, internally, as far as the armed forces is concerned. For the legal frameworks also, um, we are looking at some of our um, legal um, documents, like the Armed Forces Act, the terms and conditions of service, and some of our regulations to bring them up to speed and also um, to update them. Um, I think um, a couple of weeks ago, um, you had seen um, DCAF was, um, you know, sponsoring one, pro um, one, one workshop where members of the armed forces and other security services um, mm -hmm. have converged to look at some of our, these documents, like the Armed Forces Act, um, to ensure that it is in tandem with the, the, the constitution or the draft constitution that is uh, what's being ruled out. Mm -hmm. So a lot is being done, um, despite um, the fact that there's a huge outcry there. Um, however, um, this is a process. It's not an event um, that is like um, you do it one off and you are done with. Um, but um, I think from the side of the armed forces, we can say with confidence that um, a lot is being done, um, but um, more room also, you know, needs for, for improvement. So part of the reform, are we expecting any army who we are sent to return back to the force? Um, you're talking about in statements. Um, well, in the, in the past, um, around 2017, there have been um, a board was constituted to look at um, some of these um, personnel of the armed forces who were wrongfully dismissed. But, um, you know, I wish to under, um, um, underline that it's not only the armed forces, members of the armed forces who are affected. You know, it's across even the civil sector. And there were people who, you know, whose, um, you know, employments were terminated um, wrongfully, you know, you know, in the past. And um, it's not only in the armed forces, but um, for the part of the armed forces, a board was constituted to look at some of these, um, you know, you know, people's cases, and those who had um, credible or, or, you know, who who were deemed fitting to come back, you know, were reinstated. But um, like I said, it's not only armed forces, but uh, it's across even the civil sector. Um, you know, people whose you know um, employment have been terminated, have been reinstated. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. You're most welcome. Thank you. That was the Army spokesperson, Lamin Sanyan, speaking to us on the dismissal of Corporal Omar Sajo.